In this lesson we're going to be looking at the length of a line segment and how do we calculate that. And we're going to be basing that on principles uh, surrounding the Pythagorean theorem or using the Pythagorean theorem. So to just a quick refresher, if I were to give you a right angle triangle, and it's important, it must be a right angle triangle. Typically we will label this when we're setting up for the Pythagorean theorem with A and B being the two sides of the triangle that are not the hypotenuse and then side C is the hypotenuse but you need to be ready to deal with any number of variations to this your sides are not always going to be labeled A, B, and C if you want to relabel them you can consider that but if the labels that are given are already using the letters A, B, and C it would really be incorrect for you to then reuse those letters so you just need to adapt yourself so if, for example, this second triangle was instead labeled instead of A, B, and C, if this was X, Y, and Z, you need to be flexible enough to realize, well, in this case, across from the right angle is Z. That means that's the hypotenuse. So the Pythagorean theorem becomes Z squared equals X squared plus Y squared. So no matter how these things are labeled, you need to be able to uh, use apply the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so if we just think in terms of the Pythagorean theorem, let's take a look at, I've got a, a couple of nice points here. They're on exact grid crossings. So if I want to put together a right angle triangle for this, then I'm going to do a vertical line here, a horizontal line here, that makes this corner my right angle and that means across from the right angle is going to be my hypotenuse. So the length of AB which we're going to label as the distance between AB that is my hypotenuse. This vertical length if we imagine this is at the value Y equals 6 and then down here we have the value from here y equals 3. So from 3 to 6 that gives me a distance my vertical distance for this triangle is going to be 6 minus 3 which is simply equal to 3. Horizontally from here we have x equals 1 and here we have x equals 5 and so the distance between those two edges is going to be 5 minus 1 which is equal to 4. So now I know I'm trying to find my hypotenuse and I'm going to be using the fact that this vertical length is 3, this horizontal length is 4. The Pythagorean theorem in general says that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. A more useful form of that involves taking the square roots, but for now I'm just going to go ahead. So that's just the Pythagorean theorem in general. How do I apply that here? DAB, that's what we're trying to find, squared, that's the hypotenuse squared, is equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared. In order to find DAB on its own, I need to take the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. Now a little bit later in this course you will learn that when you take the square root we're actually we have to consider both a positive and negative. We're not going to focus on that for now but I just want to make sure it's clear. I haven't forgotten that. For now we're dealing with distances. Distances are always positive so we take the positive square root. So the distance between A and B is equal to the square root of 3 squared is equal to 9, 4 squared is equal to 16, DAB is equal to the square root of 25, DAB, a little messy at the bottom of the screen here, need to give myself some more room, is equal to 5. So therefore the length of my line segment is 5 units long. Okay, and that was using the Pythagorean theorem. Now let's go through, is there a more efficient way that we can do this without having to draw our triangle and do all of these subtractions separately? Is there a way that we can bring that together into a formula? 
Well, here's the formula. So how am I going to get there? I actually meant to delete that. So before we get to that formula, let's take a look at, here's the distance that I want, D. And here is the length of the X side, the horizontal length. And here is the Y. So if I just created a triangle like this, then I think quite reasonably, you would say that d squared equals x squared plus y squared. Remembering d is the hypotenuse. Or we would write that as d equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. But we're not going to stop here. This is still not a particularly useful form because I have to construct my triangle. So once again, Let's consider this in terms of slope. What if I was asking you to find the slope of this green line? If I was asking to find the slope of this green line, we would call that delta y over delta x. But what is the delta y? So once again, that's my distance. Delta y is the difference between the y values. So this is delta y. Delta y is the length of that side. Delta x is the difference in the x values, so that's delta x. So that's another way we can use this, using familiar terms, using the same terms we would use to calculate slope, delta y, delta x. And so now when I write d squared, it's equal to, and just be careful here, because we have to put that whole delta x in brackets, plus delta y in brackets and square that. Or... If we want to d all by itself, delta x squared, delta y squared, and I take the square root. Notice I draw my square root afterwards because I want to make sure I can fit everything underneath it. One more step. So let's take the next step on this one, thinking about, well, what are the definitions of delta y and delta x? So once again, I'm just going to take that out. And now I'm going to, there's my distance. Here is my delta x, but delta x has a definition. Delta x means the difference in x, which means x2 minus x1. Delta y means the difference in y's, which means y2 minus y1. And so now, when I write out my distance squared, instead of delta x squared, I'm going to write x2 minus x1, and that whole thing squared, because I'm squaring this length. x2 minus x1 is this length, so I have to square the whole thing. Plus y2 minus y1, that's the vertical length, and I square that. Or I take the square root, of both sides, I end up with d equals x2 minus x1, all squared, y2 minus y1, all squared, and the square root of that. And that is the distance formula. That's known as the distance formula, and that's what I had deleted from those pages earlier. So now we have something that doesn't require us to draw a picture, doesn't require us to figure out these vertical and horizontal distances in advance. If I know my two points, whatever they may be, x1, y1, x2, y2, I can apply this formula by plugging those values in, substituting those values. Let's put this into practice. Just going to jump ahead. So here we have an example what is the distance between the points g negative 3 1 and h 4 5 so before I apply this to a graph I'm just gonna put those points on the graph but I'm not actually going to do anything more with them so negative 3 1 negative 1 2 3 positive 1 there's g and h is 4 positive 5 5 and that is h and I'm trying to find the length of the line segment that joins those two points so I could construct my right angle triangle and I could figure these things out 
But what I'd like to do is to rely upon my distance formula. So my distance formula says d is equal to x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. Take the square root. That is equal to x2 minus x1. So here's x1. Here's x2. So x2 minus x1, that's going to be 4 minus, so x2 is 4, x1 is negative 3. So I'm going to use brackets to make sure I make that negative of a negative very obvious. I have to take x2 minus x1, I have to put brackets around that whole thing, and then square it, plus y2 minus y1. So y2, so here's y1, here's y2. So that's going to be 5 minus 1. I have to put brackets around that whole thing and square it. And I have to take the square root. Now this becomes an order of operations question. 4 minus negative 3, that's equal to 7. I have to square that. Plus 5 minus 1 is 4. And I still have to square that and I take the square root of all of that. 7 squared is 49, 4 squared is 16, taking the square root. 49 plus 16 is equal to 65, square root of that. And then it says it wants it rounded to the nearest tenth, so the square root of 65 is equal to 8.06, which rounds to 8.1. So this is my exact answer. And this is my, of course, this is my rounded. Sorry, the writing gets bad at the bottom of the tablet here. Let me just clean that up a bit. Okay, so when the question asked for an exact and approximate answer, when we, when we want an exact answer, that means no rounding. So we don't want any rounding, and usually we want no decimals. So if you've got a fraction, leave it as a fraction. That's what an exact answer means. And then an approximate answer means that you will round it, and if it tells you where to round it to, great. Otherwise, use your best judgment. Okay, do we have another example? We do, but before we get to that, so when we talk about the distance between uh, two straight or between two points, we connect them together, and that makes a line segment. And then we determine that length using the coordinates, using the distance formula. Connect the points, construct a right angle triangle, use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length, or we just make use of the distance formula, x2 minus x1, all squared, y2 minus y1, all squared, and we take the square root of that, which is an easier one rather than going through this trouble of graphing, getting a good scale, drawing the diagram. One other topic that I wanted to touch upon associated with this lesson is this idea. What if we want to determine the distance between a point and just a line? So rather than the distance between a point and another point, we find the distance between a point and a line. And as you can see from my diagram here, actually we, the way we do this is we still have to find the distance between two points. We just need to find out where this point is. So the way we do that the first thing you need to uh, accept or understand is that the shortest distance, which is the distance we're interested in, the shortest distance between this point A and this blue line is where these two lines cross each other at a 90 degree angle. So the blue line and the red line are perpendicular to each other. So the first step we take is we have to determine the equation of a perpendicular line. So this line is given 
and then what we need to do is figure out if we know this line then we can find the perpendicular slope and we know we have a point so we find the perpendicular slope we get the equation y equals m perpendicular x plus b and then we're going to sub the point 6 3 to find b okay so we've done this this is something we we have done previously you find the perpendicular slope I, that assumes that of course that the line this line we know this is actually it's already written below there so we know in this case we know that the slope the slope of this line is equal to 2 so in the red line what is the slope of this red line m perpendicular is equal to negative one half then the equation of this red line becomes y equals negative one half x plus b and then I will sub in the point six three to find b so once I've done that now I have an equation here and I will have an equation here I can use those two equations to determine the point of intersection between the new line in red which has this equation and the original line in blue which has this equation we've done that before that's been the focus of this entire unit and now that I know the point of intersection which is B I can calculate the distance between A and B and that's the new part of this lesson so I want you to understand that this idea of finding the distance between a point and a straight line it's it's all things that we've done the only new thing is this distance formula and um, the idea that you have to put these things all these steps together in order for it to work out okay I believe that's it all that's left to do is your homework on this